does goodness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Naqsin. Naqs means that which is either a loss or subtraction of what? Amwal of your wealth. There's not only going to be addition. Every day we add. You know, you have a little business and you're adding your rupees on a daily basis, mashallah, the rands or the dollars. We're adding them up and we're actually counting them. And the day will come when you're not counting them, but in fact, you are counting your loss. Allah says, that is from us. That is from us. We want to show you we give and we take back. And when we give you, how do you react? And when we take back, how do you react? Allahu Akbar. There was a time when the people of Mecca, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were placed into a place known as Shi'ab Abi Talib for several years, and they suffered the sanctions of the kuffar of Quraysh. How did they respond? Did they give up their religion because a person of another religion was offering them the cut of their losses or perhaps some financial gain? No. They, they took it, they endured it. They said, we belong to Allah. Our return is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is happening here is temporary. It is a test from Allah. You know, this issue of loss, of wealth. In South Africa, there was a brother from Somalia who had shifted to one of the cities approximately 12, 13 years ago, and he had walked and perhaps caught a boat and perhaps struggled and suffered because of the calamity and disaster in Somalia. May Allah help the brothers and sisters there as well and grant them peace. And he came to South Africa with nothing. He started a business, honest, upright man. And mashallah, he developed a wholesale business or a retail business, a, a major uh, shop that he had where it was very, very big and it became huge and he was helping the rest of his community and society. Everyone comes, they go to him for help. One day a fire gutted his entire business, the whole business. So he lost everything. And the journalists, non-Muslim journalists came to him, they found him. You are the owner of the business. Yes, it is burnt, lost. So do you have any insurance? He says, no insurance. Listen to the answer. No insurance. Why not? My religion forbids me to engage in that type of activity. This is his response on television. And then he says, they asked him a question. Well, how do you feel? You've lost everything. He says, when I arrived in this country 11 years ago, I did not have shoes on my feet. I did not have shoes on my feet. Today, what I have lost I can easily tell you I have a house still and I have a place that I'm living in and I am sure that tomorrow I will start afresh and again and it won't by the will of Allah take me as many years to develop this business if Allah wills because wealth belongs to him. He took it away. It was always his. Do you know a non-Muslim who was interviewing him began to cry or should I say had tears in her eyes this is amazing tears in her eyes and today he's back in business perhaps bigger than what he was just two years back Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar this is called faith this is a response of a believer to say Allah gave me this I had no shoes a lot of us seated here perhaps our parents could not really afford shoes and perhaps they may not have been able to afford a certain type of a life that today we are leading. And wallahi, we are sitting here with much more wealth than our forefathers. Believe me, we have a condition that is far better and still we are more depressed than ever before. The amount of people on antidepressants on the globe today only requires you to visit the Sheikh we spoke about yesterday, Sheikh Google, and you will find out that wallahi, it is far more than ever before in history. Yet we have the iPhone and we have everything else. You know, we have subhanallah, the latest technology. We have much more than our forefathers and we are unhappy people. Why? What we are lacking is faith and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have the conviction. We don't have the contentment because we don't realize why we are in the world. We today sometimes are made to believe that we are in the world to follow the latest trends and to really buy the latest items and to have that which is the latest. So much so that if you have the latest phone today 
If they were to advertise the iPhone 6 tomorrow morning, your heart will feel such a pinch that it never felt when you missed Salatul Fajr. It's a fact. Because why? I just bought the iPhone 5 yesterday. If only they would have told me, I would have waited a day. I don't mind paying another hundred dollars, two hundred even. But at least I would have had the latest. My brother, my sister, you run behind the world. Guess what? It runs faster than you all the time. All the time. Believe me, it's like me telling... What is that man's name who bolts from one end to the other? It's Hussein Bolt. Yes, it is. It's like me telling him, listen, I'll race you. I, one day I'll win. Believe me, you know, as heavy as we are, mashallah, compared to them who have made it in less than 10 seconds, what chance do we stand? The world makes it in one second, 100 meters. You want to compete? You'll never catch up. Allahu Akbar. Understand it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point being raised was the lack of wealth. Sometimes we have it, but we think we don't because we want to live upon a level that we cannot afford, so we have created a calamity and a disaster, yet we had no calamity or disaster in our lives. This is the problem. If you look at yourself or myself, we sometimes do not want to admit that I need to downgrade my life a little bit and I'm going to be happy. But because the woman next door whom I'm trying to impress would actually not look towards me if I didn't have the latest mobile phone that's why I need it so everything is a vicious circle and you know what I said yesterday you are not going to get her if Allah has not written it for you so believe me the best bet is to ask Allah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness